What is going on with the mortgage industry today? We're going to find out on the Warning But Not Lost podcast. La Toile de Nord, today on Wandering Zen. Welcome to Wandering But Not Lost, your online source for finding balance so that you can align, connect, and prosper. I'm living right here now and I don't want to miss out. Is this what life's all about? The world is calling and I'm listening. Yeah, I'm listening. And now your hosts, Jen O'Brien and Matt Emerson. You've reached the Wandering But Not Lost podcast, where real estate and reality meet. This is episode 114. You can find all of our show notes over at wbnlpodcast.com. Jen O'Brien, we are, we're in a full month now, and uh, it's sheltering in place, and uh, business is still going on. Uh, people, I think, are adapting pretty well to the whole thing, don't you think? Uh, yes. Overall? No. Yes and no. I, I think so. It's becoming the new normal. I was just talking to friends also in the last couple of days and my sister actually yesterday just to say, I'm not sure if everything was to open up tomorrow. Would I rush out and go like get back to normal? And, and, and I don't know about that because I'll tell you, there's some side benefits to what's been happening um, is, is been, I've definitely been better on my routine, exercising. I've definitely saved money. Got to say oh. that. That's right. Hello? Just in going to restaurants alone. Yes. Just that alone. It's amazing over a month to see how much, and you're like, I'm liking that. So we'll see, right? So uh, it's interesting. And that's really why we want to continue to talk about what's happening, because it is really week to week. So on the real estate segment today, I'm excited to talk to Sean. Uh, Sean is a, a Sean Uihara is a lender with Loan Depot. He actually has a podcast, so I was on his podcast recently. So we'll talk to him a little bit about that and just his perspective because the mortgage industry is a little bit of concern for me more so than the what's happening with our housing market because of uh, the unsteadiness of that there's a lot of things impacting everything right now but for the most part and and i think it's also very regional like it always is as, as far as we're seeing a lot of still a lot of listings but we are seeing a significant decrease in the number of buyers. And I'm excited to talk to Sean today because I think it has a lot to do with being able to get a loan. Okay, so, right. all right. So, and I I heard you say something at the top of the show and I have no idea what it was. So that's why I was like a little bit, because I, I didn't know what Matt's topic was today. And I really didn't know what it was whenever it is that he said at the top of the show. So I that? said La Toile de Nord, which is French for French, the, the, star? the star of the North. Star. Which is the one Love of the, the models of the state of Minnesota. All so right. I am uh, actually I am uh, welcoming back a friend of mine, David Townsend, to the podcast studio. Who's one of his best friends? Actually, is a Minnesotan. So she's going to come on today. The three uh-huh. of us are going to talk a little bit about Minnesota. It was funny talking about sheltering in place uh, for places and people that live in places like Minnesota who are kind of in that, the house for four or five months a year because of the snow that's out there. Sure. Uh, uh, it, uh, have had their spring kind of yanked out from underneath them. So talk about cabin fever when you already are kind of used to being it. So I told her, I said, well, you're used to this. She goes, yeah, I'm used to it, but we're only used to it for a little bit of time. Yeah. We are aching to get out of the house. So, yeah, that'll be interesting. Okay. Yeah, cool. interesting. So we had a good a good conversation just about uh, some things to do in Minnesota. Uh, it's always kind of been on my list. I've driven through parts of Minnesota, but haven't really done any wandering there. And it's a beautiful state. So I am looking mm-hmm. forward to maybe planning a little trip to Minnesota someday. Well, Putting it on the bucket. It's not. It's one of the places I have not put a pin in for the United States. So yeah. I'll be interested in hearing more. All right, let's jump in and talk to Mr. Sean Uihara uh, from Loan Depot. See, so get a little pulse of what's happening with the mortgage industry. You're listening to the Wandering But Not Lost podcast, where real estate and reality meet. Join us and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Play, and now on YouTube. All right, we are excited to welcome, as I said at the top of the show, Sean Uihara, who with Loan Depot, he's a lender that works with our team. We do a lot of cool stuff together. As a matter of fact, it was fun, Sean, uh, being on your podcast the other uh, week. So I appreciate you coming on and doing the same here. So welcome. Absolutely, thank you. Thanks for having me. All right, so I didn't get a chance to really do much of an introduction for you. So why don't you take a few minutes just to tell our listeners a little bit about yourself and how long you've been into the in the mortgage industry, and then we'll jump into some what the heck's happening uh, uh, currently. I'm originally born and raised in uh, in in Hawaii, so I, I grew up there. Ended up leaving, going to college in Washington State. Played basketball. Um, was a huge huge sports fan. Obviously, you can see in the yeah. background here. Um, Love it. Played sports my whole life. So, 
you know, I think a lot of how I think and everything just kind of really ties back to, you know, sports and those long hours working out and, and in the gym and stuff like that. Um, I got into the mortgage business back in 2007. Um, I moved to Vegas right after I finished school and uh, got into the business by accident. I was actually doing, um, I was actually working for a, a call center at the time. And that was when the credit markets were all falling apart. And I remember, you know, coming in on a Friday and our, our boss just firing everyone on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> and um, from that, it kind of led me to the mortgage business. So I went from, you know, one industry to the next that was getting just completely, you know, pummeled by, by the economy. Uh, but I had no idea what I was getting into. The guy I spoke to was like, yeah, you know, we'll hire you and give you 50% commission. I was like, shoot, that sounds good. I guess I'll take <laughs> it. Um, so that kind of started my career and, um, you know, just kind of stuck it out, man. I never, never took a part-time job, never did anything else, just kind of suffered my way through, you know, really, and just kind of learned the business ever since. You know, and I, I got to say that athlete's work ethic – really explains a lot about how watching you how you do your business because you're you're a grinder man you're a machine you just like knock it out you just are always thinking which i think really got you inspired to do the podcast you, your podcast let's talk a little bit about your podcast is all about being an entrepreneur right and sharing entrepreneurial stories and interviewing yeah. people right so we started the um the self-made podcast a few months ago i think it was maybe you know february or so um, but it was something, you know, on our, our list that we wanted to start implementing as part of our business, um, not necessarily to, you know, generate leads and anything like that, but it was more to kind of start creating a community of people that are in, you know, real estate and entrepreneurs that we can all learn and share from each other's growth. Mm -hmm. Um, just cause I feel, you know, there's, there's a lot of competition, you know, out there, but at the same time we all need and can learn from from each other right and still be able to grow your business and have those breakthroughs that i think we're all pushing for but sometimes we don't you know want to reach out to others or ask the question so maybe that was another platform that i felt like we could try to inspire you know other people to to go after you know whatever they're whatever's holding them back mm -hmm. i love it and you've done you've, and you do it weekly yeah, we try to commit to do it weekly. Um, now with this this shutdown, you know, we're doing a lot more, so we're we're starting to release, you know, more content. But ideally, you know, I, I try to give myself a goal of at least once a week to be able to put out some video, um, video and the podcast. All right, we'll we put all that in the show notes over at WBNL Podcast. This is episode one fourteen, so uh, we'll get all those links over there because people can get it on YouTube. They can also get it wherever they subscribe to a podcast, right? Yep. yep. All right, cool. Like uh, Apple. Apple Podcasts and so Apple, on. Apple, Spotify, and yeah, we got like probably three or four other ones too that we right. use. Right on, cool. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about um, what's happening right now as we record. You know, just give us an update on what's happening with overall the, the loan and mortgage industry as, as it's impacted by this coronavirus. Oh man, it's it's been a roller coaster ride here for the last yeah. uh, few weeks. But um, you know, initially the non QM market kind of was the first to get hit. And for a lot of people that may not know what that is, that's those are the type of loans that you, you know, you traditionally wouldn't find through, you know, like Fannie and Freddie. So mm -hmm. you're looking at um, loans that are your I-10 bar or, you know, they don't have a social, um, mm -hmm. maybe condo tell financing, uh, foreign nationals, mm -hmm. you know, and then some of the deals that we actually ran into uh, that we lost was uh you know bank statement loans for self-employed borrowers or even stated income loans so those type of out of the box and niche type you know products were the first to get hit um and it, it was very reminiscent of 2008 yeah. where uh you know it was the morning of type thing and you know the, the bank just came came back and said hey we're pulling the plug on these products we don't care uh at what status you're in you know, we're not doing anything for the next 30 days. So that was, you know, our kind of early, early indication, you know, of kind of what was happening. And since then, you know, every lender is responding a little differently. I mean, we've increased our, you know, FHA credit score requirement and our VA. So every, every lender is re reacting a little differently, but I mean, we're still, it's still, 
There's still loans to be. Yeah, there's still loans that are closing. I mean, Mm -hmm. even last month, um, our entire region had a record month. So, you know, I don't know. Can you take a little bit deeper into FHA? So what generally it was about a, what, 580 credit? We could actually go down to a 520. Okay. Yeah, FHA and VA, we could go as low as a 520. What are you seeing right now? Like Now our FHA is at a 620 and VA has gone to a 680. Wow. Okay. So... FHA is still, I mean, in my opinion, still reasonable, you know, because here in Las Vegas, right, there was the home is possible. And then the hope brings you home, which Mm -hmm. both required higher credit scores. Mm -hmm. Um, So, you know, there was a few realtors that I talked to that were kind of freaking out about, you know, the 620. But, you know, when you look at it, you know, for the most part, people were selling the home is possible and and the other uh, brings you home. Yeah. And they both had higher credit score requirements. So, from a credit standpoint, it's still, you know, a, a feasible, you know, requirement to, to work with. It's not like it's going to, you know, truly slow us down to where you can't get deals done. Well, and a strategy that I know you work with, with your realtors too, is let's talk to the borrower about what they have to do. It's not impossible to move the credit score up 20, 30, 40 points with certain strategies and so forth. It may take a little time, depends on each borrower, right? Yeah. So all that is part about long-term pipeline, counseling them, St- reasons to have them get into conversations with, with us. Right. So, yeah. and I think, I think that's a big thing too. Like you said, you know, the pipeline piece, because, you know, Hey, if they can't buy today, um, obviously we don't know how long this, you know, the shutdown lasts, hopefully it's just 30 days. Mm-hmm. Um, but Hey, that could be a client that could be yours in you know, 45 mm-hmm. days from now. That's so exactly right. even though you don't get the deal today, uh, managing your pipeline, managing your CRM, your database. I mean, you know, these guys could obviously purchase, you know, down the road and who knows what happens to guidelines three months from now, right? We could go back to a 580. We could go back to a 520, Mm -hmm. whatever that ends up loosening up and, you know, you'll, you'll get the business back. Yeah. And you know what your company loan Depot, I've seen a couple really good live streams and things that they've been doing at the high level where it gets into the details of the mortgage industry, which can get lost on a lot of people, but it's important to stay informed. But, you know, I think that's pretty cool. I've watched a couple actually. Yeah. Um, our CEO, Anthony went, you know, he was on uh Kabuto coast to coast yesterday. Mm-hmm. Um, he's gone, he's done a few things with Barry Habib, who's, you know, yeah. a mortgage, you know, really legend if you want to look at him mm-hmm. like that. Uh, and they get really detailed, you know, with what's going on, what's happening to the market. So it, it's, it's, refreshing, you know, to be with a company that, you know, our CEO is kind of in the forefront, you know, making some comments and really trying to give people, you know, some peace of mind. And, you know, our biggest thing right now that he's been talking about is <clears throat> you have a hashtag better together, you know, and it's not to, you know, put down other companies or, you know, really exploit the fact that, hey, you know, these guys aren't doing down payment assistance or anything, but it's like, hey, we we all need to work together, you know, to get through this. So, you know, that that feeling right there is what's interesting always about Las Vegas, because, you know, you got into this, your business, the industry, the mortgage side in the total worst possible time (laughs) to get in. So you've already built a business in that worst downturn, in my opinion. So you've seen what it takes, but you know that Vegas has this thing about finding a way and, you know, that the hashtag about, you know, together, you know, we're, whatever we're doing or Vegas stronger even now, because I'm hearing the same thing about the casino industry. And it's not about competition right now. It's about everybody working together, because if one of the big guys goes down, it hurts all of them. So there's yeah. a lot of that happening here to help us get whenever we can get it all back and and, and moved back up. It'll, you know, we'll get into some. But honestly, don't you think it's going to be a kind of a new normal anyway? It's not. We're never going to go back to exactly how it was. It's yeah. Maybe something yeah. in between, right? But do you feel good about right now, like your pipeline, your business? You, you just kind of went through some of the issues right now on the non-QM. But when it comes to Freddie, Fannie, normal conforming loans, uh, FHA and VA, you're just talking about a little bit of a higher credit score. It's still pretty good as far as people. You know. So what's the issue that you're probably seeing is deals in the pipeline that you had with people that are, uh, been furloughed. How, how, how are you handling that? You know, uh, is that an issue of uh, verification of employment, stuff like that? Yeah. Instead of doing our traditional verifications right now, we're doing, uh, we're allowing, you know, uh, verbals to be done. 
So, you know, Fannie and Freddie, they're coming out with new guidelines and, you know, it's kind of one of those things we just take it day by day and, you know, whatever their guidance is, is kind of what we go off of, which is reassuring, um, you know, because I have, you don't want to be with a company that is going to put additional overlays with what's going on right now. Or, you know, if their underwriting team isn't comfortable with certain things, because, that can be deal killers, right? Mm -hmm. And it, that's gonna be things that probably come up late in the game and it's not gonna be anything that you know up front. So um, to be with a company right now, that's you know very, very solid. Um, and like I said, you know, we're in the forefront, you know, making comments and um, going on TV. It, mm -hmm. it's, it's very, very reassuring. It gives us the confidence to work with our agents, right? Very and nice. let them know that we can get deals done because I did a, I did a call with another broker the other day and, you know, he had, he had brought up the fact that some of his agents were working with these dot com lenders or the online guys. And he said that they lost, I think it was like five deals mm. and it was literally, you know, they weren't returning phone calls and nothing, you know, right. so his whole message was how important the relationship is today with, you know, a reputable lender, someone that you can trust um, because you, you know, it makes it even tougher today, right? For you guys to do your job with the whole shutdown, especially with the governor making his comments about open houses and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so if you get a deal in escrow, we got to make sure that we can perform. You know, that's right. that, that's the last thing we want to have is, you know, a deal falling out in the 11th hour because, uh, because of income or employment or something that, you know, it's a little quirky today. Yeah. And you know what? I, I, I think it's just about adapting, but the point you just made is important, not just even now, it's always important about having a great relationship with your lender who, you know, who you're working with so you can get the deals done. So that's great, great comment. I, I must talk to my agents about that all the time. Uh, Cause that becomes the heartache and it's, and you're messing it up for everyone, not just the borrower, but the seller, everybody involved in the transaction when you're not working with somebody that you really know is going to be there for you. I, I agree that, you know, I don't want to trash the total online thing, but there is an, an easy side for them on the other side to kind of just disappear because there is no connection as much as yep. if you and me having a conversation, talking to our borrower. So great yeah. stuff. And, and that and that model works, right, for, for some borrowers mm -hmm. uh, that might have, you know, really good credit, very easy income, right? They right. might have one job, they've been there 10 years, they have no other rental property, and it's a very straightforward loan. And you know what? the average person could, could throw that down and put it, put them into a deal. But I always tell the agents we work with, you know, it's not always about the rate. And I think that's kind of the misconception that a lot of uh, borrowers, when we search for, you know, mortgages and, and lenders, that's all they care about is, you know, what's your rate? Yeah. Fee? What's your rating fee? That's right. um, but yet that guy could literally be two weeks onto, onto the job with a call center. Yes. You know, he might've closed two deals and you're going to go with this guy because of, you have no idea on his background, right? So I always try to get them to understand that sometimes the strategy can can outweigh the rate, you know? So anyone yeah. can get you a low rate, but you know, what's the strategy, right? What's gonna be the long-term plan? How long do you plan on staying in the house? Exactly. That, um, you know, we can try to help them with some mortgage options versus just here's a 30 year fix, yeah. take it or leave it kind of thing. Exactly. It's that personal touch. And I agree. Let's switch gears as we kind of finish up here regarding the cool things that you're always doing. And I applaud you for being that guy that's out there helping the realtors that you're working with education wise. And, and you know, we're, we got something coming up with you to do to do an online seminar. And But I always see you doing things like because you're really cutting edge with your team. You've taken the investment to have people hire people to help you with video and all that. So I want to talk a little bit about that because I really appreciate what you do to help people embrace what they need to do these days ar around technology, social and all that. Yeah. Um, I was always kind of just, you know, I had my team. We, we just did our loans. You know, I was never, I never bothered anybody in any of my branches. <laughs> I was mm -hmm. the guy like just sit me in the back and mm -hmm. just let me do my loans and, you know, don't bother me kind of thing. But, um, you know, a few companies ago, I got asked to, you know, run the branch. So for me, that was kind of a point in my career that I felt like, okay, well, if I'm going to run the branch, I kind of got to be an example for everybody else, you know, and I can't just come and go as I please and, you know, do my own thing. So that was kind of a commitment I made to myself that, all right, I got to kind of buckle down a little bit. Um, 
and in during that you know transition there was uh, you know I, I don't know why i got into this but i really started like listening to gary v and oh yeah don and those guys um and really just said okay look i gotta figure out this social media thing because i was one of those people that really it was more of a private thing you know it was for my friends family and you mm-hmm. know I, I really didn't use it for business you know and this was probably two years ago three years ago um but I said, you know, the hell with this. I, I'm, I'm going to go all in. So started to figure out the whole, <clears throat> you know, getting online, getting social, Facebook, Instagram, you know, doing a website, um, running ads and all that stuff. So it started with that. And then video. Video was kind of the next step for me. Um, again, I was one of those guys. Don't take I hate taking pictures even to this day. <laughs> You know, my, my daughter's the same way. It's like trying to get us to take pictures. We're like, oh, my God, it's like pulling teeth. Uh-huh. Um, and, you know, so video for me was kind of kind of a huge mountain to climb. But, I mean, I ended up hot. I found my videographer and I would pay him, you know, per per event that we would do. And I just committed to doing that um, every month. So fast forward to today, you know, he's Leo. He's on my team. He's great. But, you know, it's been a good year that we've been doing a lot of work behind the scenes that mm-hmm. people probably don't know about just because now we do a lot more stuff, you know, online. <clears throat> um, and really, it was just biting the bullet, you know, and just realizing the power of social media. Um, you know, I like I said, I never paid for business. That was just not my model. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it never was until a few years ago. And, you know, now it's, you know, from last year to this year, I mean, we, we tripled our production, uh, from last year until this year, first quarter. So, um, the proof's in the pudding, right? It it works. I know it works. So kind of going back to the whole podcast thing and everything else. So I was like, look, if I know I can generate these leads, you know, I want to try to help the agents generate business too. Um, mm-hmm. cause more often than not, you know, most lenders and, you know, I, I was the same way. We always call agents for business and obviously agents get frustrated with that mm-hmm. because they feel like all we do is ask for business mm-hmm. and we don't give anything in return. Um, so I kind of wanted to flip that model around and kind of get rid of that stigma, um, and really try to find agents to partner with and really work on, you know, things together to be able to generate business where it's not just, they may feel that I'm taking from them. Um, you know, cause last year we, I gave away 50 transactions to, to our partners we work with. So, you know, for me, it's, it's about the partnership. It's not yeah. about, you know, Hey, can you pay for my leads or can you do this for me? Um, cause I feel like those types of relationships, you know, they, they never work out because it's right. always just about, Hey, if you can't, yeah. if you're not going to pay this, I will find the next guy That's to right. do it. Man, that is such a powerful thing you're saying, because then it becomes, you're helping coach, be a coach, be a consultant, help them share what it is you're doing. And I appreciate you saying, cause this is the thing I run into. I long ago embraced all this stuff and I hated the whole, like how I sounded and looked on the video. And then I'm like, look, you just got to embrace it. This is what, if you go meet somebody in person, this is what you look like. Yep. Stop worrying about it. Just go for it. Be yourself. And if you don't like how you're looking or whatever, work on that, right? That might be some motivation for you, but yep. you did it, right? Is that your best advice on that? Just do it. And then all of a sudden you got more comfortable with it or are you still a little uncomfortable with it? For me personally, I'm just a type of person that whatever it is, right? I'm, I'm going to do it. I mean, I think that just goes back to my, you know, playing sports my whole life. Mm-hmm. You know, my dad used to wake me up on Saturday mornings at 5 a.m. to work out ever since I was 10 years old. You know, I hated doing it, but no matter what those things were, I mean, I always just kind of push through. I've always did it. I, I mean, I get, we all have our bad days, but, um, I don't know. I, I guess it's just the com- the, the competitor mm-hmm. in me. You know, mm-hmm. I just feel like if I'm not doing it, someone else will. And, you know, there's no way I'm going to let someone else outwork me. I love so, that. That's you know, exactly it, why you do so well, my friend, no matter what I, you choose to do I next. Like you just got to do it, you know. And right on. W- so now when we talk to agents, I try to find out, you know, what's holding them back. Because um, not everyone's going to tick like me, right? And just mm-hmm. kind of you throw me out there, I'll figure it out. And that's kind of what I've done my whole career, but, you know, figuring out what's, what's the limiting belief. And I think more often than not, right. It's, it's, it's ourself, 
-hmm. It's not anything else that, you know, because we all know what we should do every day, mm -hmm. but we don't do it. A hundred percent, man. That is it. A hundred percent. So what you do, and it, have you found in this time of being a little, you know, working from home and all that, what has changed for you most? Is there anything that's changed or is it, you know, have you done some self-reflection? Because I think a lot of people are really either all in figuring out how do I adjust? And, and then I feel like there's a whole bunch of people to your point that are just like, I don't even know what they're doing. Yeah. You know, like, where are you? What's up? And they're allowing it to overtake them versus taking charge. Do you feel the same? Um, I Do you mean, see prior, that? Or? Yeah. Pr and prior to Loan Depot, you know, I was at a, a couple of companies that I actually worked from home. Mm -hmm. So we didn't, we had an office, but I never went to the office. So you're used to it. me. Now. I'm used to, to the, you know, to this environment. Uh, I mean, I miss being in the office, miss being around the team, you know, and the camaraderie you get with everybody, but we're still, you know, me and Leo and our team, you know, we still, uh, we have Thursday happy hours. So we jump on a zoom call. So yeah. we still interact with everybody. Um, but I feel like right now, you know, one thing that I kind of had on my to-do list was Facebook lives, um, and really trying to incorporate that with our business. Right. Um, so, you know, shutdown happens. And we go into fast forward mode, you know, that what that went from maybe being, you know, fourth, fifth on the list to like, let's make it happen. Hey, next Thursday, we're going live and we'll figure this out, you know, so we uh, we're still trying to work through, you know, the kinks. But I mean, mm -hmm. at this point, I could care less, you know, what we sound like, what we look like. It's the first few, you know, mm -hmm. ones that we've done and no one might no one might even watch it anyway so right yeah and that's a great point and then you just have to start putting the content out there right you just start doing and it's interesting what happens so last thing here and i i really do along the lines of education i i'm such a proponent of all of this i've been talking coaching through my coaching company through our our real estate company through these podcasts is to to embrace all this and to get into the video and now more than ever it's it's critical i feel to switch gears and be able to have and build relationships with people and buyers and sellers and so forth. So to that end, we're, we're going to test a, a, a Facebook live as a buyer seminar, right? On yep. Saturday. So we'll see how that goes. And it's all about promotion and, and handling that. But I really think people, the consumer wants information. People are home. This is the cool part because the people I have around me, the agents that are working, that are picking up the phone and making phone calls and calling leads and it's continuing right now, advertising on Facebook is cheaper. Oh, yeah. um, you know, so there's opportunities because people are at home and they're scrolling through their Facebook, whether or not they're thinking about getting a loan or looking at a house. If you have quality advertising, they may engage with you because we're having that happen on our team right now. And the ones that are picking up the phone and making calls, they're having these great conversations and they can jump into a Zoom. Now they're meeting each other or like we're going to do this weekend is let's see how many people we can get together in a Zoom and answer their questions because they have questions. Is now the right time to buy? What's yeah. happening? Should I wait? This is what everyone wants to know and you as a professional listening you have an opportunity to stay on top of the statistics partner with your lender anyone else and educate people right yeah. you're doing that so well done think, and we're looking forward to see what we what comes of all that in the coming yeah year. i think the biggest thing you know the consumer like you said right they're at home um so if now you know if you were trying to run ads now would be the time but not, you're not really running ads for business i feel you know, it's more of trying to get more exposure for yourself. Mm -hmm. Branding, um, right? Everyone that's you talking yeah, to is about how you could brand yourself and stand out right now. Absolutely. As the one like who cares. Said, everyone's at home. Mm -hmm. They're bored out of their minds. They're probably on social media. Um, so, you know, give them the reassurance, give them the information that they're looking for and, and not so much statistical stuff. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um, I always feel like, you know, when agent, you know, when we share that type of information, it's very few, right? People that are going to be yeah. that analytical that can digest it and say, oh, "Okay, I understand what this means. Let's, I'm going to make my decision." But rather, you know, I think right now it's about humanizing what we do, you know, Good. and really uh, being reassuring. You know, hey, did you, you know, are you impacted by this? You know, are you still working? Kind of thing versus. Hey, are you trying to sell your house? You mm -hmm. know, because I think the the people that put out information today, like you said, that are calling, having good conversations, 
um, and being there for your for your clients, right? I think those are the guys that are going to win when all this the new normal comes back, and they'll remember that you called me, you talked to me about my house, and it wasn't just hey, let's try to get up your listing up now, and it's more. You know, you're just being a friend, really, at the end of the day. Yeah, you're caring and what's really going on and build that relationship and be there for them. Because whether it's now or later, if you come from that place and it's not like, hey, I'm calling to see if you need to buy or sell your house because, you know, I need to get some money. If yeah. that comes across, then that is forget it. Uh, and that's the way we should do our business all the way, all the, all the time anyway. And, and it's just intriguing, the conversations that agents that are working with us are having. I'm so happy to hear it. That, that they want, they're actually, of course, generally people have a hard time getting them to pick up the phone or to respond because everybody's so busy. So right now is a perfect time to even just reach out to your own database. Forget oh, no. leads, just pick up the phone to the people that you know and pick up the phone, everybody. Yeah. It's not text or an email. Pick up the phone and go, hey, Sean, it's Jan. This was, I'm just calling all my previous clients and checking in with everybody. How's it going for you? How you doing at home? Right? That kind of conversation. Like that was the, that was the one of the first things I told our branch, you know, that, hey, because we had a couple of new people on our team and, you know, they, they've been in the business less than a year. And I said, look, go back and call every single client. I don't care mm -hmm. if you, you know, you guys are tight or not or anything. Call every person just to check on them because you know you you want to be again that that voice of reason right and again it's I, you go back to the crash and how much the media can spin things and you know yep. misinterpret what's really going on in the market that you can then at least give them some information or you know what maybe the client needs to vent right and you right. can just kind of be that sounding board and you know reassure them and who knows right they might have a friend or family member that they could then refer you because you took the time to talk to okay. them um you know and kind of help them out well inevitably in that conversation comes up how's the market what's going on and oh, there's yeah, an opportunity or we've been thinking about taking you know selling so we can get the equity of our house or buying and taking advantage those conversations come up naturally instead of you trying to st lead with that come from concern care which is what we really this is how we do our business anyway it's all about relationships so cool so sean last thing what's the easiest way i have all your information in our show notes this is episode 114 wbnlpodcast.com but if do you have like a website or easy place for people to just go find you yeah they can uh go to a website it's just sean um, that's u a u y e h a r a s e a n sean yeah, yeah web, website or you know people can text me on my cell you know 702-336-4980 i mean i i always respond to everybody yeah. so either good, way it works. good man all right thank you for your time i know you got lots going on still being in your your awesome home office sports fan i love it <laughs> uh and we'll see you soon okay we'll, we'll all right be, we'll see how we do this weekend and we'll uh, keep doing some business together because that's what we do all Absolutely. right thanks Jack. All right. Appreciate all right. it. have a great day bye-bye come take my hand and see the world The best memories are made when you take the road less traveled. Visit wanderingbutnotlost.com for some inspiration. Today on Wanderings In, we have two special guests in the Wandering But Not Lost podcast studio, Mr. David Townsend, who is a returning guest on our uh, podcast. So welcome back, David. And uh, Sue Ann Bird. It's, it, Townsend's like one of my besties. Suzanne, one of his besties. I'm going to turn it over. Townsend, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? And then we'll turn it over to Sue Ann, who is really the reason why we're here today. Because since <laughs> we've all been trapped in our homes for now a month, depending upon where you are in the world. Um, we are trying to deliver up some content at places you might want to put on your bucket list or your travel list once you're free to actually escape your domicile. So that's kind of what we're going to talk about. Suzanne's from Minnesota. So we're going to hear all about the land of 10,000 lakes, et cetera. And I'm not going to say any more because I would probably just not know what I'm talking about with Minnesota. So Townsy, tell us a little about yourself. Well, um, I'm currently in, in Los Angeles. That's where I live. And uh, I have waiting desperately to get a haircut, but I don't know when that'll happen soon. And uh, Sue Ann and I have known each other for a very long time. We met in college uh, in Chicago. And um, miraculously, Sue Ann wasn't there very long, but we, main we maintained a friendship for many, 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 many years. 
And um, she lives uh, in a suburb of Minneapolis where I travel to often. In fact, I was just there in February. Wow. Um, and <laughs> we, in fact, we went on a tour of a house and someone asked how who was from the furthest distance. And I said, yes. And the, there was a strange woman next to, not a strange woman, but a stranger next to Sue Ann. And I said, why? And we we're like, why am I from Los Angeles? She's like, why are you here? Oh. <laughs> wah, wah. <laughs> um, but <laughs> Minneapolis is great. I mean, I love going there. We've gone there in the summer. And there's a, they have a really vibrant art scene. Um, and then they also have some very, very unusual things like, um, so I can tell you more about it, but like the, uh, ice fishing is a big thing for them in yeah. the winter. Hey, hey, Minneapolis has got a bitch in airport because I've been there several times. I love the Minneapolis <laughs> airport. It's awesome. It's, so, it's good. So, Sue Ann, it tell us a little airport. about your about you and you know and about how you how you ended up in Minnesota and, and where you are in Minnesota. I guess give us a lay of the land. I um, was born and raised in Minnesota. Okay. I left to go to college where I met David. Um, a couple of years ago in Chicago and came back here. I live in Chaska, Minnesota. I moved here two years ago, um, originally from Minnetonka. We are a suburb of Minneapolis. We're about 20 minutes away. But as David can tell you, in Minnesota, you're pretty much 20 minutes from anything. Um, you're 20 minutes from the airport, 20 minutes from downtown. You're 20 <laughs> minutes to my daughter's. It's 20 minutes. That's awesome. Um, and why I'm back from my family's here. My parents were here. My kids are all here now, so this is where I live. I love, I don't know, have you ever, either of you ever seen the uh, television show? I think it's on Smithsonian Channel, uh, Ariel America. You ever seen that show? You should check that out if you have a chance to. They, It's a show that just literally flies over every state. So there's 50 some odd episodes because oh, wow. they do other stuff. And I always love it when the the whole like northern part of the country, they have the shows. And the Minnesota uh, episode is so beautiful. The state is so green. And I didn't realize actually there was so much fall foliage, but I guess that totally makes sense, right? So it's, yeah. it's There's a lot of foliage here. I think the first time David came, you had commented about the trees. Um, there's lots of trees in a it's, 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 it's very interesting. I cut you off. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, one of the things that was striking to me is I was there um, last year at Labor Day, which was early September, and the leaves, they're so far north, leaves are already starting to turn. Right. That's and wild. It was crazy. And yeah, I've always wanted to go to New England during the, the fall, um, but I think really anywhere along that area. And like I said, I'm always just blown away by the topography and the scenery in Minnesota because it is just so dense and so lush. And, you know, so much of the state is wild, right? It is. Yeah. yeah. So give us, give, go through some of your favorite places, Sue, and the places you like to go and some of the things that you like to do. Um, you know, if, if we had a wanderer that was flying into to Minneapolis uh, and be, got past throwing their, their hat up in the air like Mary Tyler Moore, um, <laughs> you know, what, what are some of the things right around there that they could go and do if they were going to spend, you know, a few days in, in the area there? Well, in Minneapolis, I mean, David is right. We have lots of arts, lots of gardens, lots of, um, we have, the number one um, arboretum, which is literally five minutes down the street it's, in the country. It's stunning, too. I've um, heard that. We have art galleries. Our theater district here is, is phenomenal. We have the Guthrie, lots of theater downtown. Um, I would love to take somebody that would come for more than two days um, up to the North Shore. And it's all rocks and... Um, like you were saying, the foliage and it there's skiing mountains up there. It's so different than down here. It's it's crazy. Then I think we cut over across and go over to Walker, Minnesota, towards the Leech Lake area, which is a lot of Indian reservations, but it's all forestry. Oh. Um, they don't necessarily have the colors um, that the Duluth and the Lake Superior area would. There are a lot of maples and stuff over there that's more um, golden colors in the fall. And then, um, and you go out west here and their farms are beautiful. They're like still the old fashioned farms with the silos and the big red barns. Oh, that's awesome. It, it's pretty. And it's, you know, it's a, a, a metropolitan city feel. But I usually, I always feel very safe when I'm downtown. Mm. I mean, it's just, it's nice. What, what, what do they grow? What are the crops that grow in Minnesota? Is there like a main main crop that- Soybeans. That Soybeans? Corn. I'm gonna add, add something there. I'm, I'm, I learned something. I was there last September, and we went to the um, 
to the to the fair, which uh, is one of the largest fairs in the country. And what we discovered is, is so isn't the Arboretum run by a, a university there? By the University of Minnesota. And yeah. one of the things that they do, I learned at the fair, is they create apples. In fact, they created the apple, the the Honeycrisp apple. Oh, okay. And they like they they grow them and they they specialize and they at the fair they had a brand new apple. Oh, that that's within awesome. a couple of years, you'll be able to buy around the country. But it's, it was fascinating. They literally the university and the arboretum grow and create brands of apples. Yep. I've I've heard about that arboretum, and I um, would love to get there someday because it's. it's I, I've heard it it's is beautiful, and it's beautiful every time of year. In the winter time, it's it's decorated for the holidays, and the spring is the flowers. And when David was there in the fall, its the leaves are turning, and uh, he loved this algae pond that was so full of algae it was just I, mean, it was, I remember well, seeing pictures of those all, but it was this it was this amazing <laughs> green color you know you're just like it was like a color you couldn't believe was made in nature but it was just beautiful but it was the whole pond was just covered in this green algae algae well hey it's not something you see on sunset boulevard so no, i can see i can see why you were you know taken by the algae of minnesota it was it True. was fascinating it was beautiful right True. Yeah. So, so let's jump into uh, the whole uh, concept of ice fishing because it fascinates me. David sent me a picture yesterday and it kind of creeped me out a little bit. And I just want to hear a little more about, you know, your, your, I, I let me, uh, first of all, are you an ice fisher woman or is it just the familia that gets out there and does their. Um, it's just the familia. Ask David, am I a nice person? No. No. I in fact, the, the first time the she ever open. went was last year. <laughs> and, um, and I, she went with us because um, I, Austin, her son-in-law, wanted to take me, and so I wanted to try it. And here's the thing: that the concept that is fascinating to me. It's a gigantic lake, uh -huh. and we load into a four-door truck, F10 truck, five of us, and we drive out on the ice to this ice house, uh -huh. and then we go inside, and there's six holes drilled in the ice. You can see there, and and but there's like a bed in there, and there's like refrigerator and we yeah, it's fascinating of course sue ann wanted to keep the doors open the whole time we were on the ice <laughs> i'm i'm petrified of the ice but i uh, know my uh, daughter and son-in-law are huge um ice fishermen and i mean it seriously is grumpy old men watch yeah. it i laugh every year it becomes little villages they name the streets the truck plows plow the roads for the cars to go out there um and people, some people literally will move out there for the winter and then go home twice a week and shower and stay in their ice house. That's interesting. That's really yeah. fascinating. So what are you fishing for? What's the fish that's for the primary fish um, that you catch? Walleye. Okay. Um, Never heard of that. But that's crappies, bass, sunfish. Okay. All right. So, oh, okay. So, well, it's a wide selection. that are. Yeah. I hadn't heard of walleye either, but the day that we went out there, we actually caught a bunch of fish and then we went back to the house that night and Sue did a fish fry. Oh, so that's your role in the in the. Uh, I, yeah, I do the fish fry. I, I, yep. I gotcha. So, okay, Mr. Townsend, since you were out there doing your fishing, how, how thick was the ice in the hole? I mean, you could tell how thick the the ice would have been. Well, it. I think her son was said on average it needs to be. It's usually somewhere between fifteen and seventeen inches thick, which seems really, really thick. But when you're when then when you're out there, it, like. Shouldn't it be like 25 <laughs> inches thick? I don't know. <laughs> it is a weird concept. But I, think I would actually I, know what I would, I would do that in a minute because it would be fun to go do that. Even though it is kind of in the back of your mind, you're like, okay, let's do the math on this. There's 10,000 people here <laughs> cutting a hole in the ice. <laughs> and it is, it's hundreds and hundreds. Like you go to areas where it's hundreds of ice houses. I That's, mean, it's, it's like a city. And, and then there's and other cars. small. I mean, the ice house that, Sue Ann's family has, there were four of us in this ice house, four and a half though, and a baby there. It was, and it was perfectly comfortable. You know, it was a one room, but, but it's still as big. It's really, it's, it's like a camper. Fascinating. Yeah. Well, they are campers. Yeah. No, it's crazy. It's fascinating. And, there, and, and they go there and they spend the night and all that. But no heater or anything, right? Because that would be. Oh. No, oh. there's heat. Okay. So now, I'll, okay. Now I got to ask the question. So let's turn on the heat. <laughs> let's turn on the heat for a second, shall we? I know we're on ice. So what, what could possibly happen? 
No, that's interesting. All right. Well, all right. So we're going to post some pictures in the show notes because I know Townsie, you had that one, or excuse me, David, we didn't introduce you as Townsie. Um, <laughs> uh, we, that picture you sent yesterday, but I'm sure that you have other pictures or Sue, if you could send some pictures, that'd be awesome because I would love to just post some pictures of people actually doing it. Cause you, when you see that in movies, I mean, unless you've experienced it, it just looks so unreal. It doesn't look like you can, I mean, I know people do it, but it's, it just seems so uh, like that's not possible. It's, I, I have I mostly know. what I have from la from February is what I sent you, but I do have some pictures from last year when we went out and it was of, of the actual ice house and the truck sitting next to it, which that's still boggles my mind. It's yeah, like this really. gigantic truck on the ice. Yeah, it like, seems like architecturally that should not work. It should not work. Hmm. Nature, it's a wonderful thing. It is. It is. <laughs> so what else? So, okay, I know you have a cabin up uh, 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 in the woods. So, I mean, mm -hmm. has that been in your family for a long time? And what do you I mean? Yeah. Yep. My grandfather built that cabin. It's been in the family for 60, 70 years. We have no running water. It is very cool. It's a big old log cabin. Um, in Minnesota, people, it's every weekend they either are on the lake fishing or they're at their cabin. I mean... With our seasons, we really embrace sun, warmth, fall days. I mean, we're outside. Right. And um, I can, I told you today, I, I call this wind spring. It was 70 degrees on Monday, and it is snowing here today. Wow. And I hate, I mean, this time of year is awful. You never know what to wear, how to dress, or where to go. So when it's nice, we're outside. It's, yeah. our parks are busy. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's really cool. I, I, I would imagine that that anybody that lives in the city, I'm sure, has a a lake house or something there, or at least knows somebody that's got a lake house. Because I exactly. To, to we went to one year. We went to um, if you live in the city, like in Minneapolis, or something. There's all kinds of public gardens, and there's this amazing museum that's actually a park. So all of the um, the exhibits and things are gigantic exterior. Like there's one that was, and I can send you a picture of this. There's one, this is gigantic tree filled with wind chimes. Wow. And, and so you can go, you're at the museum, but you're outside and you can just wander and there's exhibits everywhere. It's really, really amazing. And yeah. Would, no, go ahead. Now that, that is, you can just see that they really do embrace their time outside when they get it um, because I can tell you, it gets cold there in the winter. <laughs> yeah, and think about it. so. When does your when does your weather really kind of start sucking you guys in? Is it like in November? Is it that early on, or is it or even well, earlier? We had it as early as Halloween. Oh wow! October thirty first. Um, but yeah, definitely like Thanksgiving. And I'm sure if we would drive around, I could probably still find some little tiny snow piles. Um, you go three hours north of here and they're still ice fishing on the lakes. Our wow. lakes are open here right now. So, I mean, it's, it's a good six months of snow in winter for sure. Five months solid. Yeah. So that, I mean, that takes out a lot of your year. So I can understand why the minute that the sun comes out, everyone's like, ah, let's go. <laughs> well, yeah, let's hit the road. In the winter time when it's sunny, it's freezing cold here. So when it's sunny, you're not outside. And when I'm saying cold, I mean, it can be 40 below zero wind temperature with a 50, 60 degree below wind chill. So it's not nice outside. Yeah, a little different than we're experienced uh, with out here in California. But so you already are, you already know what it's like to be in the house for a month at a time. <laughs> Absolutely. This is nothing new. <laughs> yeah, except for I'm sure you're aching to all get out and do your thing. It's going to be interesting to see what happens when this all blows over, when it all blows over, and we can get out and start doing some of the things that we normally do again. I know that they're, you know, one of the first things I'm going to do, if I can, is that you were going to get in the car and head up to Yosemite because I just miss being mm. out and so bad. Yeah. You know, so that is like one of the first things on my, my list. So, you know, what, like, what's the first thing you're going to do when you have, when everything, when you feel like it's okay to run out there and do your thing? Do you have something mm -hmm. you want to do? Um, actually, you know, I think I'm going to go into a shopping mall. Ah, I get that. <laughs> I do. Um, I, and, and David, can I, I do order stuff online, but I'm not a fan of it. I think to keep those small businesses, I'm a, Real textile, I like to touch things. Um, sure. I I think that's where I'll go. And then, um, I mean, every we keep this doesn't go away. We're head up north, and they don't want us up there because it's we don't have a lot of that uh, um, up there. So, right. but I keep saying we might just 
So, I mean, be around us. Yeah. Tons. Yeah, I know. I never, I actually never asked you this question, David. So, what, 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 what do you, what's your go-to place when you're free? <laughs> well, you know, I actually had reservations to go to Yosemite tomorrow um, for the the Easter weekend, and of course, they canceled them because the parks are closed in, in until at least the end of February, uh, end of, of uh, March. Um, I, that's I would love to go up there. I'd love to just go to the, you know to the country and it's you know it's, it is one of my go-to places you know and yeah exactly you know and i was talking to somebody the other day about you know do we think travel will be the same and and i think that one of the first things i would want to do in the long haul is go back to europe go back to france yep. i mean you have when this is done we have to get back into our lives and and get out there it's funny to listen to people talk about, you know, predicting what they think is going to be, you know, happen and how everyone's going to get back into it. And you, it kind of ranges of the spectrum of like, no one's ever going to touch anyone again to, you know, it's going to be business as usual. And I think, you know, it'll probably be something in between there. But I, I think people will get back into things faster than they will, I think. Just because I think it's just human nature. And people are so used to it. I mean, you know, I mean, the, the, the I suppose the real uh, uh, answer to that question was, I'm going to Disneyland. But... <laughs> <laughs> Which actually will be on my list, I have to say, but uh, <laughs> it's not the first thing I want to do. I, I don't. I, you want to ease back into people. I don't want to. Know if you want to go from zero to fifty thousand all right. uh, in one day, uh, yeah. right? All right. I, well, I, I, I think it'd be really interesting when restaurants open. Yeah. I think it's going to be insane. Yeah. I know. We were in a mode where we didn't. We we. I mean, we we go out to eat a lot, and we were looking to. Uh, you, you know, we were doing a lot of cooking and stuff and we were kind of missing food and I wanted a pizza so badly. And we hadn't been opening, we hadn't been ordering things for delivery, but we, we broke down over the weekend and had something delivered because we, I, I mean, come on. It's like, I mean, it's hard to go cold turkey. It is. It is. Well, yeah. They need business or they won't be there. Well, that's true too. Absolutely. All right, you guys. Well, thank you very much for spending some time with us today. You know what? I've always wanted to go to Minnesota. I've actually been through Minnesota. We were on a road trip and we drove through Minneapolis and that was kind of my whole Minnesota experience. So I can say I've been there, but that's kind of cheating because if you just drive to the place, you haven't really experienced it. But I really need to get get there. And maybe someday I can, when you're there, Townsy, I can meet up with you guys. It would be, oh, be yeah. a great time. It'd, it be, be awesome. it'd be super fun. So we need to, uh, to plan on that. Um, all of uh, we're going to put, put pictures in the show notes. I'll have a map in there that uh, kind of points out some of the things that Sue Ann had talked about, places that she uh, would uh, take the crew if they were there for more than a couple days. And uh, all of that will be available over at WBNLpodcast.com or wanderingbutnotlost.com as well. Thank you so much, Sue Ann, for taking some time out of your schedule today. I know we're all so very busy at home. <laughs> <laughs> and David, as always, uh, great to talk to you. Uh, David and I have I ch we have challenged each other this month to close our rings for an entire month on our Apple Watches, and um, it's the tenth. Oh, it's the ninth, and um, it's not as easy as we as I it's, thought it's going to be. Yeah. I, in fact, I've got I have to get out of the house because I've got thirty minutes of exercise to get done. Yeah, we we got to wrap this up. Things to do. <laughs> Anyway, thank you guys very much. And uh, remember, everyone, be forever wandering, but not lost. Thank you. Bye, guys. Bye. You're listening to the Wandering But Not Lost podcast, where real estate and reality meet. Join us and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Play, and now on YouTube. Well, that's a wrap for the WBNL Wandering But Not Lost podcast, episode 114. All of our show notes over at WBNL Podcasts. Com. Yeah, and that was a great conversation with Sean today. I think it's so interesting to get everybody's perspective on what's going to be happening or what's happening now in the marketplace, but really kind of what's going to be happening down the line. It's Which, you know, we don't have a crystal ball, right? Well, we don't, but that's why we have to watch it daily and weekly, and we're doing that. And one of the things that we talked about with Sean, uh, and he's been helping our team with, and I really recommend for all our real estate pros listening, is to put on seminars and homeowner and home buyer trainings like we talked about to because people have a lot of questions and you're now we're all using zoom uh, or hangouts or something that you're it's a awesome way to get people to come in and have a conversation with them and answer all their questions and potentially get some business for now or in the future yeah and it's important to stay up to date and current on really what's going on and get people's opinions other you know maybe varying opinions on what's going on in the marketplace right now so uh you know stick with us because we're going to be giving you current information from all aspects of uh, real estate you know over the weeks and hopefully not 
months, but <laughs> well, we about, always give you information. Yeah, we get it. So uh, is Minnesota definitely on your list? Like, it is on my list. And, and here's the thing. Cause we but had not a little, during we, the winter for me. No, but when it's cold enough, because I enjoyed our little conversation today about ice fishing, which is very intriguing to me because uh, uh, it's just uh, an interesting concept. Have you ever seen that in a movie where people go oh, like, yeah. a hole in the they ice, get, right? They get a hut over a hole in yeah. the ice. Yeah. But no, to hear the stories about literally hundreds of these huts being out there and hundreds of holes being cut in these lakes and and, and trucks and the it's like it's like a little city, like Sue M was saying. I think that there's some structural integrity issues with ice on that. And that is a little bit terrifying. So yeah. it's funny. She, I asked her, uh, I didn't ask her on the show, but I asked her uh, afterwards. I said, are there many accidents? You know, do people fall through? She goes, oh, it happens all the time. I'm like, oh God, that is terrifying. You and your truck go through the ice yet? Oh. No, thank you. Oh, anyway. Yeah. All, right. <laughs> all right, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, we will see you next week on the Wandering But Not Lost podcast. And remember, everyone, please uh, get up, get out when you can. Social distance, stay your six feet apart, but be forever wandering but not lost.